Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We are in Buriram. Buriram is all the way in the south of Isan. Right there is the border with Cambodia. And we are not far from Khao Phnom Rung, which is an ancient site, an ancient Khmer temple. They've built a castle on top of the mountain. It has a great view. Cannot wait to share that with you. And then of course, we want to try to find out just one super local recipe, one special recipe you can only eat here. So we are going to share that meal with you. Lee and I, we are just taking a trip, just ourselves, exploring just what we find along the way. So thank you so much. Welcome to today's video. I hope you are having a great day. Let's go explore Buriram. Okay, so again, big welcome to this video. We are halfway up the mountain. This park is just gorgeous. I think this temple complex, castle complex, is from about seven to eight hundred years ago. Oh yeah. Before I forget, that is a special stone quarried from this specific area of Southeast Asia. And when we get up to the temple, you're gonna see huge bricks. It's the one they use to make the entire temple complex, the roads and the, the castle itself. So this is actually the entire province of Purira. We are down here. We're actually here and this is Cambodia. So we are way far from where we live. This is just so cool. Buriram province has so much to explore. Anyways, this is the walkway to the temple. The beautiful stones that I was talking about, they're called Hin Sila. And it is quite a ways up. Yeah, I don't even know, 50 different sets of staircases. Anyways, let's get going. So a temperature check and then you sign your name and your phone number too. Okay, so we paid. It is a hundred baht for a foreigner, but that's pretty cheap. This temple complex is huge. Might even have to do a hand over hand to get up some of these. You might have 50 of these stairs. They're so steep, check this out. It's almost like a ladder in some places. And again, that special laterite rock. Do you see that? It's so beautiful, so rough, so signifying of these, these temple complexes in this whole area. Oh, I forgot. This thing is huge. Can you see behind me? It's the cool thing to do to come like with your group of friends, with your workplace. And that's actually the same situation that I came here myself. So we are going to go explore. I cannot wait. It is so beautiful. I totally forgot how big this place is. like the entrance, the grand walkway they call it, and these right here, you see, in the past these would all have been engraved and they use a type of limestone, it's different than that laterite, so these are quite workable but they're also quite soft and being exposed like this to the elements, just covered with moss, there's no more detail, but so cool that they're still standing, right? Wow, it is so cool being here. So much open space and you can see there are trees all around, but you know, a thousand to 700 years ago when this was all very active. Wow, just imagining this being actively used is super cool. The beautiful walkway here, it is decorated with these river naga. And if I remember correctly, they have something to do with Mount Meru, which is a special place in Hindu tradition. And also this whole temple is gonna be full of Hindu style artwork and things that pay respect to in Thai, they call pra siwa. Siwa is Shiva, we say Shiva in English. There is life and real life 
uh, tied right in with religion with pretty much every single thing that we are going to see here. And it's all significant. I'm not an expert, but I just love learning the details, trying to remember what I have learned along the way. years ago they still got hot they still got sweaty so there were coverings all around this area and whenever they had processions or parties they could hang out in shade so let's go explore inside And one thing I can notice, even though you can hear the sounds of people talking, one thing I can notice being up here, there are no other sounds. If you can imagine the people stop talking, it is completely free of any noise pollution. So we're at the top of, by the way, this is a extinct volcano that we're standing on top of. That's what created this mound. Okay, so the holes, I'm just guessing, that's how they were able to transport all these rocks up to the top of this. Uh, I'm sure the rocks have to be two or three hundred kilograms each, and there are hundreds of thousands of rocks all over here. Look at these. Wow. This guy is so awesome. This is such, such a cool place. Oh, this place. I really like this section right here. Inside there are a lot of people taking photos and there are very photo friendly kind of angles to the temple, but I like this part right here. I would just sit here and think about things, imagine all of this being used. Uh, right here you can see they did not develop arch technology, which is very different, right? They just stacked the stones carefully and so over time they have all collapsed and so many of these areas have no more roof but they did have a roof hundreds of years ago and then right here you can see again it's not quite a castle i would call it a castle but it's not like a defense structure can you see here they would have had maybe different images of the king or something right here but anyways i like this you can really feel how they have integrated nature with the construction of this complex. And that's what I remember from Angkor Wat also. Even though you're obviously in a place of ancient civilization, you're still like uh, kind of intertwined with the nature of the whole area. So cool. So this is again, Khao Phanom Brung. It is in Southern Buriram. And we can see across the border into Cambodia. Beautiful place right here. So we are at the back entrance all the way at the other side of the complex. It is just... It feels so natural, even though I know it's obviously a man-made thing because it's been out of use for so many centuries. Okay, um, I think it is people here just paying respect to the history of the place, but they're blowing some horns over there. So we are on the way out, but just back behind the temple here, you can really get a sense of the, just the bare rocks that they've used. I wonder how many more hundreds of years this amazing temple will stand. Wow. Besides the bamboo over there creaking, our stomachs are also creaking. And the second thing that I was, of course, so excited to do, coming to a new area of Thailand, we gotta find just a beautiful example of local food as well. So it is lunchtime. Let's go. This has been beautiful though. So happy to have the chance to visit Khao Phanom Brung today. Okay. 
This is the reason that people come to Pakon Chai in Buriram. So years ago when I lived in Chumphuang, we would even take trips here. If you pass this place and don't bring Gung Chao back, your friends will not accept that news. You Okay. Okay. So we have come when she sold out of all the fresh vegetables that she would sell in case you want to eat it right now. So we gotta find some way to get that working. But anyways, I gotta buy some of this home jam from her. This is so cool. Okay. And we are ready. Round in the corner, entering the Hon Chai. We just had to make a U-turn. Look at this guy. Are you a hungry guy? I like your back. Very pretty. You look pretty strong. Did you eat your chicken today? It is a pretty classic day in southern Isa. The sun is absolutely blazing. We gotta sit down. We gotta get out of the sun for a few hours at least. So I was just asking him the name where it comes from, he said his son's name is Mawin. So this is Songtam Mawin. He sells grilled chicken and his machine is just epically cool. And I asked him, you know, if if it were you or just ordering for lunch, what would you have? And he said, Tam Pupala. But of course he has many different kinds of Songtam or Tam options. We ordered also a cucumber one to go with it. You gotta have sticky rice. And again, pretty cool. The fresh steamed sticky. Thank you very much, Keith. Awesome, man. Thank you. Cheers. It is blazing hot out, so remember, hydration as well. And uh, Song Tam is going to be super salty. So yeah, you got to stay up on your water intake when it's 38 degrees outside. This is a great day. Oh, wow. I love that style of Tam Tang. Sometimes it's like shredded and basically turned into a mash, which still tastes good, but I love when the chunks of cucumber are so big like that. This is just an awesome meal. Oh yeah, just smell both of these dishes rich. Rich in fermented fish sauce. And we are rich as well. We have been blessed with beautiful weather, safety on the road. This trip is just working out great, and again, Thank you for joining. This is day two of the trip. So by the way, 
day one if you haven't seen uh, all the days they're going to be in a series you can check out the full series south isan tour just lee and i we are stopping at roadside places like this, just trying to keep it very low key and focusing on the nature, on the local culture too, of course. Um, so I, I used the hand gel that he was so nice to find for us. So my hands are clean. I am going for, I'm going for a bite of that grilled chicken. That is still on fire. Okay, so make a space. Look at that, his rotisserie. I don't know if it's homemade, but that stainless steel contraption rotisserie is just doing such great work. Look at the color of that skin, just perfect. Mm. Oh, mm. Okay, that is insanely juicy chicken. Wow, fatty skin. And that chicken meat just gushed juice. Wow. I was almost not ready for how much liquid came out of that chicken. And then the reason he has these right here is because most people get the order to go. But of course he was happy for us to sit down, so. Mm. Oh yeah. Just a sour tamarind and maybe some some cilantro but then the, the balance is between the fish sauce and the crushed the dried crushed red chilies that is yeah pretty classic isan gel that is a great version it's wonderfully sour really salty tiny bit sweet maybe there is some brown sugar in there but mm, this is what it's for dunking your fresh grilled gaiyang. And I know I've eaten gaiyang in a few videos, but it is just a really classic food of, of Thailand, but definitely of Isan. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I can't do it to you anymore, Lee. Get in here. This is amazing. Yes. It's always a bit of an honor when people going by just are like staring that I'm, I don't know if they can see what I'm eating, but just the fact that I'm sitting on the street corner, a sunny day, yeah, it's an honor to me. Anyways, gotta get into that som tam, tam pu pala. That's a pretty standard order. The pu is right here. Oh, that's a whole, hello. Almost an entire, entire pickled crab as one piece. Hey, so the crab like this, you do not eat it, but the pickled juice from the crab gives real flavor to this dish. The crabs are always organic because they come from the rice fields. Wow, and they just make... Oh my. Okay, as delicious as a chicken is, the depth of flavor in a tambubala like this, it doesn't even come close. the snap of the cow peas, the sourness, the pop of the tomatoes, the blazing heat from both dry chilies and fresh chilies. That is on fire. Bitterness from the lime. Mm. Got the hiccups straight away. Pungent from garlic and that fermented fish juice. Oh, wow. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, and that is on fire. Mm. Mm. One of my favorite parts to a somtam is the fre freshness, excuse me, the freshness of the sour tomatoes. Mm. So crunchy. Mm. Love it. The sweetness from the bala, yes. There's a tiny bit of cane sugar in there. But the bala is even sweet on its own. Going right over here. 
for a tam tang. So tang is cucumber. Tam tang. So a, a tam is just the pounded salad. Oh yeah, she got. She left a huge chunk in there of the water olive skin. That's actually another favorite ingredient. Got to get some of that, and then just crunch on some cucumber. Wow. Mm -hmm. And with the liquid inside the cucumber, you need a second even to swallow all that liquid. Oh wow. Cucumbers are so fresh and so sweet. So this one is quite a bit sweeter than this, even though I'm sure they have the same amount of sugar. Just because the cucumber is so sweet naturally. Mmm. Mmm. So this is still a som tam, but uh, you can get tons of different kinds of tam. So this is a papaya tam. This is a cucumber tam. But anyways, just look at that. Just look at that mess of ingredients and just try to imagine the depths of flavor in there. This is amazing. Wow. Again, just classic, beautiful Isan lunch. Can't go wrong with som tam, gaya, konyao. Cheers. Bala dunk for you right there. <laughs> so Lee has a trick. She does not use her hands on the sticky. She is hygienic. She uses a fork. <laughs> but it's still great for dunking bala. How is that thumb tang? Spicy, fresh, and sweet. I am pretty impressed with that thumb tang actually. The som is pretty good. The chicken is awesome, but that thumb tang might be the that's actually the winner so far. Yeah. <laughs> Can you help me out here with this? Yep, grab it and you take that one. Sweating and so happy. Wow, those those were the perfect combo. I think I gotta go with the thumb tang though. That just the the mixture of the sweet and fresh flavors, and then just the deep fermentation and <laughs> rotten fish flavors. They just might sound surprising, but they go together so well. Oh chicken was juicy and the whole meal so incredibly budget friendly. Gotta love the perfect combo of som tam with grilled chicken. Okay, so we still have not found the gung jam, but we are gonna keep going. This was just, this was just necessary. When we saw the way that guy was grilling his chickens, we just had to make this our lunch. But we are gonna continue on the lookout for somewhere to have a full meal of the gung jam but just a full meal of all the dishes that, that people here would have with it. So please stay tuned for that video. And as far as this lunch goes, this is it for us. I think we need, we need a nap and or coffee. We'll see which one comes first. But anyways, I hope you are having a wonderful day today. And this was so cool. I'm so happy to be able to visit the Kalpanom Rung Temple. It's been so many years and I just forgot how amazing that place truly is. So I hope you liked learning, seeing the nature, just sharing with us our experience on this trip in South Isan. So much love to you. Peace. Have a wonderful day today. See you for the next one. I cannot figure out what is in the dip. I think it's probably mint actually. I said cilantro, but it is mint. This dip is amazing. I love it. Definitely tamarind and then there's probably roasted rice powder, which is actually a very common ingredient in these areas It's just delicious
จอกันใหม่ด้วยครับขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขครับขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขขอให้ครอบสุขข